Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone. This is your brother Muhammad Maxwell Hassan here. And Masha, I want to start things off with a wonderful good news. You know, Masha, Muslim do do more has reached over 1 million engagements. That means, Masha, when it, when it comes to likes or, you know, people commenting or people just viewing all sorts of different things, over a million. So, Paula, Mabruk, congratulations to everyone at Muslim do. And it's all because of you. We do more for you. So it's all this wonderful things happening because of you. So again, congratulations Muslim do for that 1 million engagement. Now for today's topic, this is going to be a little heavier than usual. It's about, um, it's about making sure that we stay connected with family. You know, sometimes some of us may feel disconnected with our family. Um, you know, you might have some brothers or sisters who look at their own parents, the same, very same parents that look at, the, that raised them, that really brought them all sorts of goodness, and they look at them with hostility and anger. How can that person, how can that little boy look at his mom with anger? How can that little girl look at her dad with anger? And so like, why is this? Why is it sometimes that you feel as we grow older, sometimes there may be that disconnect with the family? And subhanAllah, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a very clear picture in the Quran, but it's a very disturbing one to say the least. And I give that little disclaimer there. Uh, you know, one of the biggest, one of the parallels that you see, you know, on the, on the outside, you may have folks that are sharing things on Facebook, on Instagram, on, um, you know, TikTok nowadays. You may have feel like families taking pictures with their loved ones and everything is all nice and smiles, but behind closed doors, it may not be as rosy. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a parallel with the most unstable of homes. The most unstable of homes, and, and that is a, is, a, is a home that you may not expect. It's actually from the animal kingdom, particularly with insects, and maybe you're not really, or arachnids if you want to be more specific, spiders. The house of a spider is the most unstable. And why, let's unpack that a bit more. What does that have to do with this topic for today? You see, when you look at a spider's web, you look at it on the outside, um, it's not very stable in the sense that you can look at it from a literal perspective. You look at a, whole, uh, at a spider's web and say, well, if it's raining, it's not really going to be very helpful. If it's snowing, like up here in Canada, it's not going to be very helpful. If it's very windy, it's not very helpful. It's not like that cozy place that you are right now with columns and walls. It's very unstable in that regard. But there's a deeper, darker meaning behind that. What makes a spider's home very unstable? If you study a little bit of spiders and like how they behave, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, you may have heard that like nature can be very scary. You see cute bunnies, you see cute stuff, but sometimes nature can be very, very scary. And in particular with the family of a spider, you will find that in, in many species of spiders, the female, the mother spider actually eats the husband, you could say, right, after mating. And not only that, sometimes even the children of the spider eats the mother. Yeah, it's, it's very, really weird. I, I, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it. You know, how can a household like that? So on the outset, you can look at it in two different directions here, right? The, the house, the literal physical house of a spider is very unstable, but even the family structure of a spider is very, very unstable. What does that relate to you and I today? How many Muslims do you see that tear each other's hearts or, or tear each other in the home? It's very dysfunctional. You have fathers who can't talk to their sons. You have mothers who can't talk to their daughters. And they just want to, you know, it's just tension all around. But having said all of that, and just put this in the back of your mind, in the background with the whole spider. Now, what about, what, what, is, what other ways that we could look at it? What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us any other clues or advice on how we can mitigate this and in fact there is and in fact it's from one of the most noble prophets uh, and one of the most well-known and famous prophets that's respected across the board in so many different religions and that prophet is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam he gives one piece of advice one dua and in particular is about making sure that you you know you um that uh, to remember the parents and to actually the phrase that's used in, in, well, I'm just giving the English, is that to lower the wings of humility. Lower the wings. To lower the wings. What does that mean? 
you know, now, you know, if you see a baby bird, for example, right, when a baby bird is born, can they fly right away? Probably not. But give that bird some time, give it enough food and let it grow. Eventually, it'll grow up and fly away. How many of us, like, you know, in the Muslim community, you have folks who, let's just say you have someone, like, there's an argument, and, uh, and the, let's say a teenage son saying, you know what, forget about this, I'm going to move out. They're trying to fly away. You have a daughter who's upset with the way that her mother is treating her. You know what, I can't stand this, I'm going to just move on with my life. They're trying to fly away. And they just, they, you know, when you're young, can you imagine when you're young and you can't even clean yourself, you know, you need someone to put diapers on you, right? You, at that phase, you can't fly. But the moment you start to get all, you know, powerful, the moment you start to have all this energy and, you know, this rebellion, they start to fly away. So Ibrahim salam is giving us this one humble reminder to say, lower your wings. And so what I would like to conclude is twofold. I want to talk directly to the youth, to the sons and the daughters. And the second half, I'd love to talk to the respected mothers and fathers. To my, to my, you know, the ones who are the sons and the daughters. Let's follow the, the story of Yusuf, of uh, Ibrahim Islam to really lower the wings of humility. I understand, at least to some degree, that they just may not get it. You have your own dreams, you have your own ambitions, and you're looking at your mom and your dad, and you're saying they're living it from a different time. They speak a different language. They don't understand what I'm going through. They don't understand the troubles that are happening today. But even still, who was the one who taught you how to speak? Who was the one who fed you? Who was the one that put a roof over your head? Who was the one that really took care of you and loved you and got you to the point where you are right now? If it wasn't for your mom, if it wasn't for your dad, Whatever yours or your guardian, you wouldn't be where you are right now. So please lower your wings of humility. Lower them. Even though you may be stronger to overpower them, lower them. And to my respected and honored mothers and fathers, it's hard. I know you look at your son or your daughter and you still see that baby that you brought home from the hospital. I know you look at that child and you think to yourself that I was the one who put diapers on them. I was the one who cleaned, I was the one who fed them. And I know that I know what's best for them. I know what's, I want to protect them. But the, at the end of the day, the tighter that you hold, the more things will be resistant. You know, as they say, if you love something, you got to let it go, right? You've heard of this before. If you love something, you truly set it free, let it go. So, you know, when it, inshallah, when you let something go and you say, you know what, gradually, it will, it will, they will fly, but they will come back, inshallah, with the best of ways. And so we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us not to have a house of a spider and for, our, you know, to, for us to remember to lower the wings of humility and for us to really let things go, like for the, like, you know, for the next generation to come. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you look back and maybe your, your mom and dad are no there. They're not there anymore. The one day that you look and you say to yourself, mom and dad, I used to be very upset, very angry, and those trivial matters will go be a wash. At the end of the day, though, if we remember that we are connected with family, we are like a tree. We may grow in different branches in different directions, but at the end of the day, the roots are all the same. The roots are all the same as long as we stay one as one. Uh, bin Allah. And so we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to maintain that family ties. It may be tough. It's easier said than done. But I promise you, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guarantee that if you can maintain proper family ties, life will be so, so much better. So let's lower our wings of humility. Let's let things go. And at the end of the day, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to avoid the house of a spider. بارك الله فيكم جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear brothers and sisters Islam and welcome back to another episode of the Art of Parenting this is your host brother Ella it's an honor for me to have you once more and thanking you in advance for your time and your effort may Allah سبحانه وتعالى protect you your family health and wealth and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us all as he gathers here in this life with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with our families, with no accountability. Ameen. Last time we talked about the uh, shaitan. The... Oh, 
شيخ علاء حضرتك ميوتد شيخ علاء حضرتك ميوتد لو تشيل الميوت لو سمحت شيخ علاء سمعنا what also uh, is the attributes that we have to attain in order for us to be with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Jannah, as we mentioned earlier, and also if you're having difficulties to conceive, and what are the four things written in the womb, and what is exactly that we have to do to learn from that in order for us to be able to attain that high level that we always ask God Almighty for. So before we started, my brothers and sisters, in the beginning of these series. I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Bilal, to make us among those who speak and follow the best of it. And indeed, we have said that our ultimate goal is to be together with our families in the highest level of the paradise. This is a means that we have to attain. And we said that it is previously mentioned. It is proactive approach, not a reactive approach. So we said we have to look for the righteous spouse and so on and so forth. We build the basis. But now before your children even create it, we are going to give you the dua. As we mentioned before, it is that every night, not just on the wedding night, but it's every night that you have intimate relations with your spouse, you have to say this dua. The dua is, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaitan, wa jannibna shaitan, ma razaqtana. Which means, O oh Allah, in the name of Allah, O oh Allah, protect us from that mischief of shaitan and protect our children, which you will be granted us granting us from shaitan. What does that mean, brothers and sisters? It simply means that shaitan will not touch them. Simply means that shaitan will not, they will not sin. They will not commit any sin. They will not make mistakes. No, on the contrary. The scholars say that dua will protect your children from being a, a heathens, leaving that realm of Islam. That means that they will commit sins. They will make mistakes. They are human beings after all. However, they will die in the state of Islam. So at least remember that. And remember Maryam, alayhi salam, the mother. Sheikh Ala, you're on mute. Sheikh Ala, you're muted. Sheikh Ala. Sheikh Ala, you are muted. You touch the screen. Oh. No means that she says, Oh Allah, we seek protection. Oh Allah, protect my daughter and her lineage. So we follow suit and that, by the way, is in the of Sahih al-Bukhari. So please, sisters, remind your husband, just in case they forget, for not just the wedding evening, but it's every evening that they have intimate relations. Please remind him to say Bismillah, remember the dua. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you a child on that evening, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him and also they will die in the city of Islam because shaqa al abna, shaqa al aba. And the difficulties that children will go through, the difficulties that parents will go through. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Huwa alladhi yusawwirukum fil arhan fayi fasha. La ilaha illa wal aziz wal hakeem. He's the one that shapes you in the wombs the way he wishes. There's only one deity deserving to be worshipped. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that all wise. So what does that mean? I want you to, brothers and sisters, to think not just for having a good-looking child. You know, Allah grant us that, which is fine. Apple for the eyes. But what I want you to do is to teach him the dua. Oh Allah, how you perfected my shape, me, the form. Oh Allah, perfect my character. So I don't want you to concentrate on just what they look like from the outside, but they will look like on the inside. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he is the one that does. So everyone is a creation of Allah is beautiful. And that's what I usually tell the sisters, oh, you don't have to compete. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bila, created you. In the best fashion. So you are beautiful. You don't have to worry about, do I have to take my hijab off? Do I have to compete? Do I have to put my makeup on? Do I have to put perfume? Do I have to have that loud... Uh, a smile or a, a twinkle, uh, whatever, show the pearly teeth and remove that hair and all of these things and make some noise with my heels and anything else like that in order for me to get attention. La, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told you that you're beautiful. Uh, we know that you are, alhamdulillah. It's not what's under the hood, it's really what's inside the heart that matters and what's the actions and the Allah that matters. 
So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that, it's also what's inside the womb. You know, when people say that, you know, the Quran is, uh, has a little bit of difficulties, when we say, you know what, we know now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah they will tell you that, you know what, look, we know now uh, if it's a boy or girl, but my brother, my dear sister, in humanity, do you speak Arabic? They say no. Okay, do you understand the difference between man and ma? One is like the whom, and it's talking about anything, something that is tangible, something that is live, something that is aql, something that is mindful, and so on. It doesn't mean necessarily that there's a, a male or a female. That's not it, because obviously we know that we can tell now. But how do you know that what will come in is another hadith? How do you know if they're happy or sad? How long they will live? What supervisions are coming? As you will see in the hadith, no one knows that. You see, this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, he's the one that has the knowledge of the hour, meaning judgment day. And he sends down the rain. And of course, you know, you understand when this happens, we understand you teach your children because the power of Allah, the infinite wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa jalla bi'ula. In order for them to attain that a love and fear of Allah subhanahu wa jalla bi'ula. So when they tell you, you know what, I feel sorry for the weatherman because they will tell you, please get your bathing suit, burla, fur coat, you should be covered. Because they can't tell how many times we were wrong. How many times that we actually say, you know what, Cancel wedding because of the, the weather or add something or do something and it turns out to be totally different. It's exactly what Allah said. And he knows where the rain is. He says, What's in the, which is in the womb. Not necessarily womb, boy or girl. No, a lot more than that. You will see in the hadith, inshallah. And no person, he shall know what will earn tomorrow. And no person knows what land they will die in. And verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all nowhere, all aware. So when you teach your children that ayah, at least, they will know in the aqidah, they will know that, you know what, they will depend on Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi ula. It is not that it's something that is tangible that they will have to do. And they will not depend on anybody else because they know what the risk the hands of Allah subhanahu wa jalla fi We don't know where we're gonna, what we're going to earn. We don't know where we're going to die. But we will do our best to earn and we will do our best to die in a righteous place and earn righteous lawful source of provision. And that's exactly what we have to understand from this. Also, when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that is narrated, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to us that when a person is gathered in a womb forty days, then their sustenance hangs for another forty, and so on, and the other ones is sustenance is similar duration, and then after one hundred and twenty days, four things are, are written. The words are the provision, the lifespan. The deed, happy or sad. Again, this is Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. What does that mean? Two angels come in the womb. It means you have to understand that this is our aqidah, our belief system, that we are not going to be ever deterred or shaken or, or deviated or distracted from anything else other than exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us what we are going through the motions, but we are not going to be held accountable of what we're going to earn, but how we're going to earn it. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed the risk for you, the sustenance and provisions. But you will be held accountable of how you attained it and how you spend it, according to hadith on judgment day. That your feet will not be moved unless you're also asked about four. So the similar four that you're written in that womb, you will have the similar four on judgment day. SubhanAllah. So Allah has written for you that decree of the provisions in this life, 120 days in the womb before you even come to this life. But you will be held accountable what you are where did you get your money from and how did you spend it so that uh, my dear brothers and sisters we will be held accountable for not how much money the money is already uh, decreed Ali ibn Abi Talib had a beautiful story when he was traveling on his horse he went to, to uh, pray in the, in the mosque in the masjid and he left his horse and uh, entrusted with someone he says take care of my horse when I come back he came back and his reign the one that controls the horse was gone so he goes to the marketplace and finds out that he now looking for his own. And he was looking for it. He found it. He asked the merchant, I ask you for the sake of Allah, how much did you give this man that gave you these reins? So I gave him two dinars. So Wallahi, I was going to give him the two dinars. Well, I can now stagger. But he was in a rush to get his sustenance. That means the sustenance provision is exactly the same. But he decided to go fast. He got it from Allah, unlawful means. He had waited and were patient. He would have had the same exact money, but from lawful means. 
So the number one on the womb is the provision. Number two is the lifespan. That means you will never be able to worry about, you know what, am I going to die? Am I not going to die? Not asking you to stand in front of a truck and say, you know what, my lifespan is already decreed. But you know what? You only die once. Don't say I only live once. Yes? You live every day, my brothers and sisters. You die once. I'm not going to go into the ayah. No, I'm talking about tangible in this life. Something that we know, aware of. So if you know that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guarantees two things that you're concentrating on and you're worried about, you're distracted. Your whole life is distracted about your provisions and what is my lifespan about? Allah guaranteed it. So if you know that Allah guaranteed it, why should you worry? Just spend the money. Get it halal and spend it for the sake of Allah and spend your life for the sake of Allah then you will be on the right track. Number three, one minute left. Deeds, your actions and deeds. So you will be held accountable for your actions and deeds, my brother and sister. So please note that this your actions and deeds are extremely important. Just like a bank, like Abdullah the Masrud, the sun has risen of something the day that I don't deposit in the bank of Hasanat is not a good day for him. So your actions and deeds. But remember, Allah will not hold you accountable for the things that you have no control over. The knowledge, the infinite wisdom in Allah, and the knowledge of Allah is exceeds your actions and deeds. It's not the driven factor. And in Allah, Allah does not hold you accountable for your wants and desires, or how you act according to your wants and desires. So after this, is it happy or sad? Close to the mercy of Allah or away from the mercy of Allah? Again, this is Ayat Bukhari. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to do so. But just in case, my brothers and sisters, you're not able to have you know, children. There is a cure for infertility. Alhamdulillah. Allah Akbar. You see, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when, so in the word, tell them, say, ask Allah for forgiveness. Indeed, Allah is the most forgiven. What happens is, Yursil Sama alaykum madrara. We'll give you a like, beautiful sustenance from the rain. And you did come by amwal and not just uh, the, the sustenance of the, from the heavenly, but on the, the, the wealth, even the businesses. Wabani, righteous children, and the lineage that you're looking for. See? Beautiful. Jannat here, gardens here, and the gardens there. Rivers here, and rivers there. Allahu Akbar. So when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a man came to complain about him. But the, that I'm not getting any children. I need, I don't want to die alone. So he says, Did you do istighfar? Did you give sadaqah? He says, If you do a lots of istighfar, lots of sadaqah, this is again uh, in the Musnad, uh, inshallah, this is uh, Abu Huraira, uh, radiallahu anhu arda. He says that if you do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you children because of that. So, my dear brothers of Islam, we talked about the beginning, duration, after, and the cure. The questions in the four in this womb, and the questions in the four in the year after, it's similar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you, I've given you, guaranteed your sustenance. Where did you get it from and how did you spend it? I've guaranteed you your life. Is what have you done with your life? Understand? Your actions and deeds. What did you do with your youth and what have you done with your knowledge? And now happy or sad, are you close to the mercy of Allah or away from the mercy of Allah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us close to the mercy of Allah, not kicked out of the mercy of Allah, those who are cursed. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who speak and follow the best of it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you everyone? Again, we are having fun inshallah twice a week, every Monday and Wednesday. On Monday, we are talking about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and every Wednesday, different topic each time. We're still talking about the prayer, but with a different uh, point of view. Uh, today's topic about the conditions of the prayer. Okay, how to participate in the game? First, you need to provide two devices, at least one mobile for the whole family, so you can follow me on Muslim Do app and listen to my voice. And 
other devices, each participant has to uh, get into the game through different device. Uh, any tablet, a laptop, uh, iPad, any other device, so you can join the game. I will wait for you only one minute, so you prepare the other device. The competition is very easy. Even if it's a new topic for you, the questions are easy, and there are uh, pictures that can help you, and you can use the help of your parents. I have to do this introduction or say this introduction each time. So uh, uh, just in case if we have new participants, but try to prepare yourself next time. So let's go. Once you bring your other device, open your browser and enter this, uh, this address, join.nearpod.com. Again, join.nearpod.com. It will ask you for the code. This page will appear you to you. Uh, it's at the top left of my screen that I'm sharing, Q5VXN, all the letters are capital. Again, Q5VXN. This is the code at the top left of my screen. Once you enter the code, it will ask for your name. Please write your full name. And then you will join this lesson. You will see the screen waiting for me to start the game. When I start the game, you can choose the character that you would like to play with. Just one more minute and we can start, inshallah, the, the competition. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I need to <laughs> so bring another device, open your browser, write join.nearpod.com, then enter the code Q5VXN, then enter your full name. After that, uh, you will join this lesson, waiting for me to start the game. When I start the game, you can choose the character that you would like to play with. So far, we have six participants waiting for more. Just one more minute. OK, I have to start. We have a limit time. Bismillah. Okay, let's choose this one this time. Okay, we have Ziyad Ahmed Abdel Hamid Muhammad Gadallah and Karam. Welcome, Karam. This is your first uh, uh, time. Hala, welcome, Hala. MashaAllah, new names. Amazing. And we have Bayan wa Amira. Why Bayan and, and separate? You need to enter with separate names next time, inshallah. We have Maryam Ahmed. Nice characters. If you have time, yeah, Amira or Bayan, you can enter with different device quickly. We still have time. Huh? Quickly, quickly, quickly. We're missing two more. Sura, sura, sura. Let's go, hurry up. Ah, we have Basma, MashaAllah, new name. So two, four, six, we have, to, we're still waiting for two more. Choose the character and hit start. Click on start button. 
But I have to start. <laughs> okay, say Bismillah. Bismillah. Three, two, one, go. First question. When your mom says you won't go out unless you clean your room, means عندما تقول لك أمك لن تخرج حتى ترتب غرفتك معنى ذلك إيه؟ It's a condition, right? You have only two options. Okay, yes, nice. So you have to clean. First, you need to clean the room. And if you do this condition, you will go outside. This is a condition. It's an example. Okay, so that means you have to do that condition to take whatever you want. هذا معناه أنك يجب أن تحقق الشرط لكي تأخذ ما تريد. True or false? Amazing, we just said it. Montez, mashallah, it's true. of course true. So the same is the prayer. The same way prayer has conditions to be correct and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. نفس الشيء مع الصلاة. فلها شروط يجب أن نحققها لتكون صحيحة ويقبلها الله سبحانه وتعالى. True or false? Nice, nice, nice. Amazing. You answered very fast. Next question. The prayer has two kind of conditions. Obligatory and validity conditions. الصلاة لها نوعا من الشروط. شروط وجوب وشروط صحة. And we will explain. The picture will help you. شروط وجوب وشروط صحة conditions uh, obligatory conditions and validity conditions excellent true for the first type conditions of obligatory means when these conditions happen شروط الوجوب هي الشروط التي إذا تحققت if it happened these conditions then you have to pray or you don't have to pray. Yes, amazing, you have to pray. If these conditions uh, uh, is valid, then you have to pray. What are these conditions? The first obligatory condition is that you have to be a what to pray. أول شروط الوجوب أينك يجب أن تكون ما ذلك يتصلي. Muslim or non-Muslim? Of course, a Muslim, because non-Muslims, they, they don't pray. Okay, next question. The second obligatory condition, when you what? You have to pray. ثاني شروط الوجوب عندما تصل إلى إيه يجب أن تصلي. You have to. The picture will help you. So we said the first condition, that you be a, a Muslim, you have to be a Muslim to pray. So you have to pray. If you are a Muslim, you have to pray. And the other condition, to reach your puberty. Al-Bulugh, Sin al-Bulugh. Excellent, amazing. Mumtaz, mashallah, tabarakallah. Next question. The third obligatory condition, if you have what? You have to pray. Thalith shurut al-wujub, idha kana ladayka, madha yajib an tusalli? A crazy brain, if you are a crazy or if you have a healthy brain. Of course, if you have a healthy brain, if you are crazy, Alhamdulillah, Allah is mercy. So you don't have to pray. You don't have mind to pray. You, you don't have mind to concentrate or memorize anything. So even though if you are uh, fainted or uh, in a surgery, you don't have to pray. Once you wake up, you pray. Okay, next question. The fourth obligatory condition, when the what comes, you have to pray. رابع شروط الوجوب عند دخول ماذا يجب أن تصلي? When what comes? The time of prayer comes or the time of playing comes, you have to pray. Of course, the time of prayer. Uh, once the Zohar time comes in, you have to pray. You can't pray the Zohar before the time. There are times for the, each prayer. 
So you, once that time comes in, you need to pray. يجب أن تصل. These are the four conditions for obligatory. Question number 10. Conditions of validity means when these conditions happen, your prayer is what? أما شروط الصحة فتعني أنها إذا تحققت فستكون صلاتك فستكون فستكون صلاتك خطأ مطبعي. صلاتك تكون valid or not valid. شروط الصحة. Validity means what? Conditions of validity. If these conditions, you uh, uh, made them, yes, excellent, your prayer will be valid. So the conditions before, you have to pray once these conditions are done. Now, your conditions, uh, uh, you have to, uh, okay. Next question. The first condition of validity that you have to make an intention before you pray. Then your prayer is valid. أول شروط الصحة أنك يجب أن تستحضر النية قبل الصلاة حتى تكون صلاتك صحيحة. True or false? Conditions of validity. شروط صحة. Amazing. Yes. You need to do niyyah before you pray. So once you do it, your prayer is good. The second condition of validity to make sure that what? So your prayer be valid. ثاني شروط الصحة. أن تتأكد أن ماذا حتى تكون صلاتك صحيحة. And the picture will help you. Of course, you need your the place that you are praying on be clean and your clothes clean and also to make wudu. All the above. Excellent, amazing, mashallah, tabarakallah. Next question. The third condition of validity that you have to what? So your prayer be valid. ثالث شروط الصحة أنك يجب أن حتى تكون صلاتك صحيحة. To cover your aura or to uncover your aura. The aura means for the for the boys from the belly button till the knee. For the girls, the whole body. So you need excellent. You have to cover your aura or the uh, to wear the dressing for the prayer. Mumtaz uh, ahsantum. The fourth condition of validity that have to fa uh, you have to face the what. So your prayer be valid. Rabi shurut al-saha and takat al-tawajjah nahwa what. حتى تكون صلاتك صحيحة. So we said to the being clean, making wudu. Yes, facing the qibla. ممتاز. أحسنتم. Next question, last one. We have to make sure that we meet all these conditions so our prayer be perfect to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يجب الحرص على تحقق جميع الشروط حتى تكون صلاتنا ممتازة. ويقبله الله منا سبحانه وتعالى. To or false or agree and or disagree. Amazing. ما شاء الله تبارك الله. We have Hala at third place. And then Maryam Ahmed. Familiar name. And the first place is again for Ziyad Ahmed Abdul Hamid Muhammad Gadal. Congratulations for uh, Ziyad, and inshallah you will be a winner. MashaAllah, Karam, fourth place, Amira, fifth place, fifth place, Hala, third place. All of these are uh, uh, new names. Inshallah, next time you will be a winner. Congratulations for everyone, and inshallah we will have fun uh, next time. See you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. This is Riyad Wazazi uh, back with you. Uh, into this uh, weekly program called Homemade Happiness. So, so far, alhamdulillah, we've shared with you three principles as we've been talking about foundations on how to uh, bring in happiness, serenity into our homes. Uh, uh, we had several messages. Risala lil awlad wal banat, risala lil aba wal ummahat. وكذلك اليوم إن شاء الله تعالى سوف نعطي رسالة للأزواج بإذن الله. So we had several messages. One message was uh, to the youth, uh, our kids, uh, girls and boys. Uh, message to the dads and, and moms, of course. 
and today inshallah ta'ala uh, we'll have a message to the uh, spouses last week message or last week's foundation was lughat al atifa the language of compassion or the language naam the language of compassion today the topic is very very related to the language of compassion i had a brother who called me once and he was complaining uh sheikh uh, my wife is your wife uh tghayyarat <laughs> the right way he says tghayyarat you know she changed i said okay uh what do you mean she changed uh, she is not the same she's kidak and i know exactly what he's trying to say but i'm acting kind of like yani dumb i want him to talk get lo anta when you married this woman or before you married her or as you were trying to what are the things that attracted you in this woman so now i brought back his memory you know 20 years back dali he says uh, definitely her hijab uh, her intellect her taqwa her haya her this her this her that so mashallah then what changed what has changed dali tghayyarat get lo is tghayyar it was tghayyar is it you who tghayyar is it you who changed Well, she changed what changed i mean this woman what attracted you is her haya her modesty her 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 taqwa her piety the, the mashallah the way she dresses and everything so so what is it that you want then i see you know i and I, i knew what he wanted to say so i asked him he says if you have this plant what do you do uh, he was from morocco galina fillah he's a uh a laborer he works in the field i said okay great good example it says when you when you do your work in the field and then you throw the seed what do you have to do after you throw the seed he says i have to water it gitlu i said if you don't water it what will happen he says of course yani if you throw the seed and then uh, when you come to harvest there will not be no harvest because you did not water just like a flower when you don't water the flower the flower will die قلت له يا حبيبي have you been watering the love هل سقيت الحب انت الان تشتكي زوجتك بل هل سقيت الحب he says i said did you water the love did you water that flower because if you don't water the flower the flower will die likewise this woman that you're complaining about did you water that love the woman is the woman وانت is انت i think what has changed is the thinking is the moral is Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ajeeb uh, when he says about wa asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khayrun lakum and then he mentions about you know women versus men fa in karihtumuhunna fa asa an takrahu shay'an wa yaj'al Allah fi khayran kathira he says you may dislike but he says about women wa asa an takrahu shay'an wa yaj'al Allah fi khayran kathira you may if you may dislike something maybe Allah azza wa put so much khair in it When you have you ever seen and I asked this man this question I said two 80 year old man and woman together a husband and wife ممكن هو عنده 80 وهي عنده من 90 whatever he's uh, 80 years old and 90 year old you know together husband and wife sitting together looking at each other looking at each other and I, and I said um he's looking at her as if she is she is the miss universe هي مسكينة كلها she's all you know crippled maybe she has one tooth <laughs> maybe she has only one tooth left and then she smiles هو مسكين كمان very old but he looks at her she looks at him as if she is the most beautiful woman on earth what kind of eye is he looking at to her يعني with is it the eye of love or the eye of رحمة بأي نظرة ينظر إليها نظرة الحب يعني نظرة الجمال هي في عينه أجمل مرأة مثلا في العالم نعم ولكن هو ينظر إليها بنظرة الرحمة That's why Allah سبحانه وتعالى when he says in the Quran ومن آياته أن خلق لكم من أنفسكم أزواجا لتسكنوا إليها وجعل بينكم مودة ورحمة مودة مو الحب Allah says in the marks his signs is that he has made amongst you your mates so that you may dwell in tranquility and he has put amongst you affection he didn't say love he said mawadda mawadda comes from the name of allah al wadud and he says rahma rahma i said i think you stopped looking at your wife with the with the nadra of rahma 
I think you stopped watering the love. And that's why you're complaining that your wife has changed. had too much, too much. And I'm not trying to defend you. Yeah. I will have a message for the women as well. But um, I want to maybe give this to the men. What of the love? Ya yeah, Habibi. If you want her to be Khadija, be like Prophet Muhammad, as I told this, you know, maybe last week. You know? And then a message to the sisters as well. Final message. And this message is summarized in one advice given by a woman to her daughter in the night of her wedding. She says, Ya Bunayati, Kuni lahu ama, ya kun laki abd. Kuni lahu ard, ya kun laki sama. She says, Be his earth, he will be your sky, be his female slave. He will be your male slave. Yeah, anyway, what she's trying to say, don't argue, don't be stubborn. Be his earth. He will be your sky. And be his female slave. He will be your male slave. So apply, number one, that language of compassion we talked about, the language of love, the language of rahmah. <coughs> Water the love, brothers. Isqi, isqi, al How can you water the love? How can you water the love? You may ask me, you tell me what to do. How can I water that love? How can I water that plant? Naam, water the plant so that the flower will grow and blossom. Your wife, she is a flower. If you don't water her, she won't blossom. If you don't water her, she will not blossom. She needs you to give her that hub. She needs to hear it from you. You know, the touches. The hugs. I know sometimes it's hard. You may tell me, best try and do it. So you can see the mawadda. And then for the sisters, again, Kuni lahu ard, yakun laki sama. Kuni lahu ama, yakun laki abd. You can make your husband as sisters. I hope you listen to this. You can make your husband and turn him like a ring in your in your finger. Wallahi. And I'm using this analogy. If you be smart, your husband can be like a ring in your in your in your finger. You turn him as you wish. I call this a sihr al-halal. And you can play it, sisters. You know how to do it. You know how to do it. And Sheikh uh, uh, Amjad is with me. He can correct me if I'm wrong. Naam, they know when they want, they can play a sihr al-halal. They can, they, mashallah, they are. But sometimes, he the <laughs> mood. If you don't want that love, she may say, we don't want this to be conditional love. I would end with this. Khalas, khalas. We don't want this to be, this relationship between husband and wife to be conditional love. You give me, I give you. You tell me I love you, I tell you I love you. You buy me, I do this. This, this is conditional love. We want it to be unconditional love, inshallah ta'ala. From both ends, from both sides. We will have a homemade happiness, inshallah. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our homes with serenity, with love, with affection, with rahmah, with peace and joy and happiness, inshallah ta'ala, to make our homes like the homes of the Prophet Muhammad and the homes of the Sahaba. I have one more session left next week, inshallah ta'ala, to summarize all this and to give you a, a, a beautiful golden advice at the very end, insha'Allah. I hope and I look forward to seeing you next week, insha'Allah. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 1.1 million Mubarak. We congratulate Muslim Duo for reaching over 1.1 million engagements. Great job. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you more success and bless you to benefit the community and to always uh, offer great programs. Jazakumullahu khayra. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah. Respected brothers and sisters, respected viewers of Muslim Do, welcome back to this special episode of Raising Children in a Challenging Environment. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, the last episode was actually the end of the story of Musa 
alayhi wa ala rasulina salatu wa salam where we explored together the conditions that Musa alayhi salam was raised in and the special uh, factors, if you will, that uh, were clear in Musa's journey between his parents' uh, house, his home, and the uh, palace of Fir'aun. Today, inshallah, in this special episode, we're going to recap and put everything together. So this episode will be a special episode where we put all these factors together. And next episode, inshallah, we're going to talk about more qualities that we learn from Quran Kareem where we need to inject in our children's uh, personalities at an early age. So inshallah, we can raise high quality Muslims that are needed to better the condition of our community. The story of Musa alayhi salam, as we said, it's a very unique and special story, and it's very relevant to our condition as a Muslim community living in minority. Number one learning that we need to know, when a minority is suffering difficulties, challenges, uh, whether it comes to safety, uh, social challenges, disarray, new growing community. We have a lot of challenges, Islamophobia, settlement challenges, language challenges, a lot of challenges. This will definitely affect our ability to raise, um, I don't want to say good children, but quality generation. What do we do? What do we focus on? We said that first thing and first and foremost, we need to remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own tadbir. And we need to believe in the tadbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we feel weak, the first thing you need to know when you feel weak, when you feel impotent, when you feel powerless, when you feel helpless, before thinking of a plan, a Muslim should think of the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tadbir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and have utmost, utmost uh, 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 certainty and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will help us and will make up our uh, shortcomings and, and will, will, will uh, empower us in the time of weakness. So first thing uh, that we see in the story of Musa is tadbir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moved Musa alayhi salam from his mother to his enemy's house and how this whole journey had a great tadbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how Um Musa was asked and was uh, 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 not directly asked, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awha ila Um Musa, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her the comfort in her heart to go with the tadbir. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you believe in him with utmost trust, you will feel it in your heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's tadbir is working. And with your iman, you will be following the tadbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where condition number two is iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no matter what challenges we have outside of our homes, no matter how difficult it is, we need to make sure after believing in tadbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, taslim al-amr kamil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second thing is, we said, it's iman. We need to have absolute iman at home. We need to raise our kids on iman. There's absolutely no compromise. We cannot say, but I'm busy. We cannot say, but this is the trend. We cannot say, but you know, everybody else is doing this. So our kids have to do this. Everybody else is watching this show. So I cannot prevent my kids from doing it. There has everything we do at home has to be wrapped up with Iman, Tarbiya, Diniya, uh, Islamic knowledge, Islamic etiquettes. We want a very special and unique generation. This generation will not come in an environment of lack of faith or weak Iman. Khalas, this is a condition. It's a principle. We need to believe in it. We need the utmost that we can put 
طبعا it's all up to your ability اتقوا الله ما استطعتم it's all up to your ability but the, 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 the most iman and knowledge in Islam and knowledge in deen we need to make sure we give to our children condition number three to raise such great generation is الحب love the unconditional love that we need to give our children remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَأَلْقَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ مَحَبَّةً مِّنِّي so that love has to always be there. Between Iman and love, we stabilize this generation and we don't leave them thirsty for love and care that will start that they will that they will start looking for it outside home. Because the child or any human being will feel settled where love is. We want them to feel settled at home. That's where love is at home and Iman is at home. You keep that connection at home. And we also said, as we, uh, uh, as the ayat mentioned, this sina'a, this terbiya at home between Iman and love, the terbiya diniya at home. And love has to be ala aini. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us in the Holy Quran, we need to be present in their life. It cannot happen behind our backs because if you're not present, someone else will be present in their life. So we need to be present as well. That's a third condition or fourth. We said, We said, We said, And now we said, You need to be present in their life and you need to watch every step and make sure you're there. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're the ones that's going to give them all the uh, religious knowledge. You might not have it, but it has to happen before your eyes. You need to choose the right people to do it. And you always need to be engaged with your children. So these are the first four conditions. What other conditions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, guided us to in these ayat after we stabilize the internal Strong believers, full of love, full of inner peace, full of internal stability. Now we need some skills. We need some skills for them to go outside and really make a difference in the world. And that's what Sayyidina Musa got in Bayt Fir'aun. What did he get in Bayt Fir'aun? He got Al-Izza Wal-Ilm, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. وَلَمَّا بَلْغَ أَشُدُّهُ وَاسْتَوَىٰ أَتَيْنَهُ حُكْمًا وَعِلْمًا so condition number five is al This generation has to be Aziz. It has to be proud of his deen. It ha- this generation has to be proud of his heritage, proud of being Muslim. So a pride of his heritage, of his deen, of his language, a strong, very strong skills, also strong with al is has to be educated. This generation has to be highly educated, highly qualified, not necessarily in academia, but also qualified. It could be trades. Uh, they, you know, there's a lot of great trades out there. We need them to be very uh, unique in, in anything they do to reach the level of Ihsan in everything they do always has to be distinguished. Strong in their knowledge, strong in their pride, in their religion. Put it all together. The last point that we end with, also as guided by the Holy Quran, when we have them with this great strong personality, what is the mission that they want that we want them to engage in? That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala told us about is al Islah. We don't. It's not the idea is not for them to become leaders. Leadership is a byproduct of al Islah. We want them to be Muslihun. We want them to be out there, people that care about public service. They care about their community. They care about their society. With all these great skills, what do we need it for? Do we need it to make more money? Do we need it to get higher levels in and at work? No. We need these great qualities to serve the public to be reformers, to better the condition of others by focusing on the islah, by focusing on public service, by focusing on bettering the condition, not just their Muslim society, but all human beings out there helping everybody. This is the essence of leadership.
With this put together, we can, inshallah, create a strong generation of Muslihun, a strong generation of Muslims that will be role model citizens, where everybody will look at and say, why are these people doing this? They will proudly say, because we are Muslims. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uh, teach us the right essence of being real Muslims that will benefit the entire world, real Muslims that will bring nothing but good to the whole of humanity. With this, inshallah, we will have this great generation. And I urge With this, Allah will be able to raise this great generation. Jazakumullah khair for your attention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and protect you and bless and protect your children. And we'll see you next week. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another episode of exploring the book Islam Between East and West. Uh, before I get started, I just want to say congratulations to the Muslim Do team for reaching over 1 million engagements. An amazing achievement, mashallah, given that they started uh, very, very recently. So um, sending all my congratulations and salam to the team at Muslim Do. Jazakumullah uh, khair. Um, so today, remember last time we talked about kind of the main argument of the book, Islam Between East and West, which is that given, uh, you know, given a Christian world that really focused a lot on spirituality and neglected the material world, and on the other hand, given looking at a material world that really focused on advancement and technology and, you know, increasing our profit and neglected spirituality, Islam emerges as kind of the one true uh, system that applies for everybody, applies for all humans, regardless of uh, their differences. So inshallah, we're going to explore that idea further today by looking at morality and where did morality come from? And this is actually one of the thickest chapters in the book. So uh, very excited to kind of uh, go through it with you all. Um, I don't know if anybody has actually started uh, reading it uh, along with us, um, but I hope you're enjoying it so far. And I hope this chapter kind of gives you a sneak peek about um, the morality uh, chapter of things. So I wanted to start by kind of talking about some of the dangers that uh, us as Muslims who really care about social justice and human rights might fall in. So there is a dark side to kind of uh, activism on social media. You know, when you care a lot about like all the different, you know, difficulties that are happening, you want to stand with all the oppressed people. But there comes times where we accidentally fall into things that logically oppose Islam, subhanAllah. So I, I I grabbed two examples from the real world. So pro-choice, which is basically uh, supporting women and um, you know uh, performing abortions or like basically aborting their babies during pregnancy without uh, without cause, basically. So uh, we know that um, you know the the logic that you know society comes up with today is that the woman is the decision maker because she has kind of the um, the, the authority or like not the authority the, uh, the ability to carry babies so she is uh, in the decision maker of what she decides to do with her body but we know that in islam uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us our bodies as amana both men and women everybody our bodies are an entrusted gift from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so claiming that the decision making comes in our hands now is a faulty logic right because Going back to Islam, the decision is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, kind of not, you know, we all end up, we all have our free choice, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, um, uh, wrote it in our in our laws that um, that this body is, uh, you know, belongs to him. You know, we say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi wa our entire bodies belong to him. So here we, we come at an opposition with kind of our Islamic beliefs and uh, modern social media activism. Same thing with hashtag love wins, right? We end up giving the decision making for who to marry and who to love within people when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written it, uh, written it down in our uh, in our laws because he knows what's best for us, subhanAllah. So we, we are at a mess of things right now. We, we're stuck with these morals. We're not sure kind of like that tension, what is right, what is wrong, you know, are, are we as Muslims kind of, you know, not for everybody's human rights? Are we for everybody's human rights? What, what do we do? So, inshallah, to hopefully the, those questions get answered uh, towards the end of the episode. Um, right now, I wanted to do a little fun thought experiment with everybody, and it's called the defeated hero. So imagine with me that we're watching a battle scene, right? And everybody is kind of watching this hero 
fight for the fight for the village, you know, defend its people. He's fighting and fighting with all his strength. And after all, after all this time, after all this effort, he falls on the floor and is defeated. You know, the enemy defeated him. What are your emotions at that moment? Are you saying that this hero, what an idiot, what a loser, he couldn't even beat the enemy? Or are you saying like, wow, he tried so hard, he fought so hard, I'm in awe, I'm inspired, I'm amazed. Um, you're feeling more of these positive emotions. Same thing when you ask an atheist who's also next to you watching this battle scene, they will also say that, wow, what a hero, he died, he, he died a noble death, right? Uh, they say that a lot, you know, we see that in movies. This, this movie scene is taken from like, you know, um, uh, from a Western production or like a, a non-Muslim production. I, I think this is Japan. And anyways, but the main idea is um, the defeated hero like um, it creates emotion in us. So you, in atheism, like let's look at this same scene that is happening from an atheist lens, from an, an, an eyes of um, the system that says there is no God, right? If we use that system, then what the hero did is stupid because he ended up losing, he didn't end up saving anyone, and he ended up dying without, without having done anything. So if we don't believe in God, and if we don't believe that there is a day of judgment, and if we don't believe that there is a reward and there is another world, which is heaven and hell, then we cannot understand why the hero is a hero. So um, that kind of experiment illustrates to you that every single one of us, regardless of you know religion, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us and created that kind of fitra within us to recognize morality so again why did why did both kind of the muslim and the atheist find that death heroic and find it noble well because we believe in the day of judgment and atheists whether they know it or not they kind of believe in a karma or like a universe um you know if i do good the universe will pay me back good so uh you know uh, that's why i'm going to be moral um so that's kind of uh, one of the main things that motivates us as Muslims to um, to, to seek morals and and being uh, be, become moral characters. Um, so yeah. And another way to phrase this is that religion, right? Religion is kind of the knowledge that we have, the truth that we have, and morality is the application of that knowledge, right? So as Muslims, we know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala exists. We know that the Day of Judgment exists, and because of that. We're going to become morals. We're going to uh, we're going to become um, moral individuals, uh, have good character, uh, etc. Now, with atheists, they yank both of them out and say we're only going to follow morals. We're only going to be moral people. We don't need religion. But that becomes uh, problematic because how are you following how are you following morality, which is you know it came from religion and still not admitting kind of the source. Uh, so a, a, an easy example to think of this is imagine, you know, somebody going to university, going to all of the classes, all the classes, same thing as you, but did not enroll in them, did not sign up Aslam in the first place. Uh, will they get a degree in the end after all these four years of hard work? No, because they, they kind of refused. They were arrogant to follow the system and, uh, and um, you know, follow what was encoded. And subhanAllah, obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better than all the examples that we'll give. But um, yeah, basically that's kind of the analogy. And of course, when somebody doesn't know and doesn't know the system, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all forgiving. Now, look, going back to the idea of atheism, can atheism be a system that we follow? The answer is no, because it doesn't have room for morality. And let me explain why. In Chicago in 1951, the police announced that ni uh, almost 90% of the crimes that were like uh, that involved theft, which is like, you know, stealing money, basically, were unsolved. So all these criminals got away with it, which means that th that kind of crime makes money. Right. So because remember how we talked about the materialist world and how, you know, it cares about profits, it cares about money production. These um, this kind of criminal activity is profitable, which means to them this is this is good, you know. So atheism doesn't really have room for mora morality. And even if you want to say, OK, well, no. Uh, you know, atheists want, for example, the good for the public. They want, you know, money for everybody. Okay, let's use that example. Alcohol is something that makes money for countries, right? You know, people, uh, uh, countries want to sell and buy alcohol because it makes money. But alcohol ends up killing a lot of people every year in car accidents. It ends up harming people and, you know, going to the hospital for, you know, solving issues in their body because of too much alcohol drinking. So it is clearly causing harm on society, but it makes money. Right. And so that's why materialists rationalize that as OK. So in general, what I'm trying to say is that atheism as a system 
doesn't really explain morality. It doesn't really justify why we need to be moral uh, people. But at the same time, it can easily kind of explain criminal behavior, which is uh, problematic. Now, remember a few minutes ago, I said that um, some atheists can be moral. Well, what makes us different then? What makes a Muslim different than an atheist who uh, are both you know, doing good and uh, being moral characters? The difference is authentic morality. As Muslims, we know that we need to do good and to be good without waiting for the consequences, without waiting for rewards in this life. Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all these you know, rewards and consequences in his hand, and he's able to kind of bless us in, in ways that we will not even imagine in this world and in the next. So uh, as Muslims, we're not really kind of going around doing good because of like we're waiting for that transaction, we're waiting for that payback. No, we do it solely kind of uh, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know, uh, we have faith inside that inshallah will be paid back whether in this life or the next um, without kind of that transactional waiting period. And then I wanna end off by saying something um, kind of very beautiful in the book that I found. And uh, he, uh, the author was saying that in the Quran, subhanAllah, more than 50 times, the word believe and do good deeds came together. Believe and do good deeds. They are paired together more than 50 times in the Quran. Which means that, you know, uh, the core kind of belief is, you know, if, if you're waiting, if you're struggling with your Iman, if you're trying to bring it up uh, and you're having low moments of faith, do good deeds, give charity, uh, be kind to your siblings, be, uh, you know, um, pa um, be <laughs> buddy to your parents, be respectful to your parents kind of thing. Uh, once you do those good deeds, it nourishes that kind of faith and it, it rekindles it and it makes, um, it makes you kind of regain it. And so, subhanAllah, um, you know, as we know in, in the hadith, I believe, in, none of you believe until you love for others what you love for yourself. So the, um, loving for others what you love for yourself is the good, de uh, the good deeds, the moral character, and then belief, inshallah, comes with that. So I hope that, you know, if there is one thing you're going to take from today, it is that. And you know, building kind of your belief through morality, through doing good deeds in this um, dunya. So inshallah, I hope uh, you benefited. Jazakumullah uh, khair for listening. And inshallah, I'll see you next week for final wrap up of the book. Um, again, Jazakumullah khair for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, was salatu was salamu ala rasulullah. In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Respected brothers and sisters, the viewers, those who watch uh, Muslim do application. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is Dr. Amjad Qarsha with you. I'm so honored in this episode of Success Stories to welcome on your behalf, Brother Joshua, Joshua Basil. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Joshua. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi Dr. Amjad. Alaikumullah khair. To be honest with you, now, you know, the title of this program is Success Stories. I personally believe you have a very beautiful success story. And I know your story, if you want to highlight it, I mean, in depth, it could take us three hours or four hours. And we have just very limited time. Now, we welcomed you as a very dear guest in Ramadan a few months ago. And really, everyone listened to your discussion with Sheikh Hussam, Hussam Hilal, Jazawallahu Khairan. He, he and she was impressed, actually. That's why. We would love to have you again because definitely we have a new audience now who are interested to listening to Muslim Do application. And maybe it's good to say congratulations for the Muslim Do application for uh, reaching more than uh, 1 million engagement on the app. Alhamdulillah. Brother Joshua, success stories. You decided to become a Muslim a few years ago with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah accept from you. And may Allah let you live this worldly life while you are in the top of your faith and in the top of your practicing for this Islam. However, when you decide to become a Muslim, definitely, definitely, like any normal person who decided to change his culture, his faith from two, you were facing a lot of, a lot of difficulties and obstacles. I want in a short journey to choose you from the best of challenges <laughs> that you faced and how did you succeed with them if you mentioned one big one i'm happy 
If you highlighted three medium mm-hmm. ones, I will be more than happy. Mm-hmm. If you highlighted five simple ones, no problem. We want the youth to listen to you. You are uh, in a very open, individualistic, materialistic culture. You decided to come to a new system with a new spirit, relating yourself with the akhirah, the hereafter. Definitely, maybe some people who were laughing at you, some people making fun of you, some people think you are just wasting your time. Your inner fight inside yourself, your shahawat, your desires. Okay, please let us have some of your struggle and how did you succeed to achieve the best result with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the main umbrella. I will keep listening till I have a question. I will just interrupt you to ask you about one of the points. Bismillah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair, uh, Dr. Amjad, and Allah bless you. Uh, you Allah really, uh, although it, it, it should really be quite easy for me and simple for me because I have tried to relay my story a couple of times, it's always actually uh, a, a bit of a, a challenge, uh, you know, to always be able to convey it properly and also go through all those uh, memories, subhanAllah, is, is tough. I'd say uh, one aspect that I think any reaver and perhaps many young Muslims uh, would face as a challenge when they decide to become more religious and more dedicated uh, to the deen is, you know, knowing where to start, knowing where to learn, knowing how to learn, and having this huge task of learning about Islam, which still to this day, you know, scholars have dedicated their lives to studying the deen and learning about it still, but, you know, yet no one really can claim to know everything uh, about Islam, you know, uh, perfectly. At best, maybe they specialize in one area at, at best. Now, for young teenagers, maybe they've, you know, they're in high school and they've been through some challenges <laughs> and <laughs> some, <laughs> <you> know, some, <laughs> they, they came across some events <laughs> in their lives and now they want to, you know, <laughs> keep some more seriously, you know, how would they <laughs> want to start? And similarly, reverts go through this big challenge when they, you know, take their shahada, they eventually learn about, you know, <laughs> the <laughs> ibadat <laughs> they have to <laughs> now do uh, as a Muslim <laughs> and they start to find out, wow, you know, there's uh, rulings for, you know, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just about everything and you know <laughs> five daily prayers to make up and then there's additional uh prayers outside of that and so on and so forth so i think that's actually a key you know uh challenge that i i did face uh, there's, 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 but i think the biggest message i want to give everybody uh through all of the different challenges that i may mention is actually the theme of <laughs> constant struggle and oh, constant uh, ups and downs. So, you know, there's no real success story that just sounds like, you know, a challenge, you know, a nice smooth ride and then absolute golden success. You know, there's a lot of bumps and a lot of challenges along Mashallah. the way. Very realistic, very realistic. Mashallah, like, I'm very happy, very interesting because, you know, sometimes, sometimes when some people in some kind of training courses when they portray for the trainees that you know if you do one two three steps you will be living in a dream world mm. Khalas, everything is finished which is not realistic not real even in the world of faith because this is the nature of the dunya <laughs> so i'm very happy like, to see that Allah. <laughs> to, to, no, to listen to you saying true. that and yeah. Honestly, sometimes I forget that, and it's very important even for myself, someone who is, you know, trying to study more, uh, both uh, in my post-secondary education as well as studying the dean. We all really need that that reminder. So, for you know anyone again who is trying to take on that large journey of studying the dean, I can recommend to, them to first off get some good friends get some good friends who you know are also studying maybe they're in a class together maybe they're a similar age group uh, maybe they have even a sibling you know someone who uh wants to you know encourage them to you know continue their studies someone to help them someone to push them and even someone to be their accountability uh partner subhanallah you know there's wow. so many beautiful Muslims in our community and I promise you whoever is listening to this right now if you have a problem there is someone out there who wants to encourage you to overcome that problem and who wants to encourage you to do better 
you know, ever since I became Muslim, you know, I knew, again, from the very beginning, I could say I knew very few uh, Muslims. But today, alhamdulillah, I could probably say that, although not everybody by name, you know, I know probably hundreds of, of beautiful people in our community. And one strategy that helped me get to know more people, is, again, very helpful people, people who helped me study the deen, people who actually became my teachers, I ended up getting to know them because there's a hadith I found early on, which uh, I've just found online here that says, a man asked the Messenger of Allah, uh, وسلم, what aspect of Islam is best? And the Rasul replied, that you should provide food and greet both those you know and those you don't know. Yeah. And this really helped me get to know, like, everyone I know in the community, alhamdulillah, you know, saying salam alaikum when I get to events, when I get to a class, when I leave events, even just going for the uh, Juma prayers or Salah prayers, wherever it might be, getting to know people can really help. And this is how I found, you know, students of knowledge, as I found my teachers, alhamdulillah, well, and, uh, you know, certainly anyone who wants to, you know, ascend that, that, that uh, path should really just start to... Uh, reach out to their own friend circle and if they don't have someone in their friend circle helping them already they need to go in and uh, expand that friend circle go and meet some more uh, fellow Muslim brothers and sisters uh, subhanAllah to help them on that journey inshallah so very nice one so now uh, let's say one of the obstacles that you overcome that when you want to start that you need to get good friends now getting a good friends is dependable uh, uh, on many things such as a very nice strategy which is applying applying the advice of prophet muhammad to spread salam for anyone who whom you know and you don't know very nice I, i'm repeating i'm just you know briefing what you are saying for the listener just to pay attention that you have like a methodology in understanding and the strategy in applying things this is not just a hadith it's a strategy by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's not just a saying. It's not, no, no, it's not a meaning. It gives you a strategy how to build good relations. Good relations mean a lot of good, nice people around you. When you face problem, some of them at any moment either will be giving you an advice, pushing you, holding your hand giving you spiritual support and physical support helping you holding whatever it depends so it's very nice and you just because sometimes most of the people they ask what shall i do okay so you are answering on the what <laughs> and how which is very nice one very nice i like how how reasonable and realistic you are <laughs> mashallah <laughs> mashallah mashallah what well, now, now, one of the things you started saying, uh, you know, knowing where to start and how to start. Can we go back a little bit? How did you discover where to start? <laughs> As someone, you came with a blank background about Islam. Mm. Okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so in my particular case, because yeah. I found Islam during my years at university, yeah. Alhamdulillah, I almost immediately uh, was introduced to the McMaster Muslims uh, Student Association. I mean, many uh, campuses uh, now have an MSA, a Muslim Masha. Student Association, or, or maybe it has a different name, but they're really the same thing, Alhamdulillah. And that was really the backbone of, you know, allowing me to benefit from regular services, a weekly halakha, uh, the Juma uh -huh. prayers, Alhamdulillah, and just really being able to connect with the good brotherhood again again it was the people subhanallah who were really supportive and uh, that really helped me and everything kind of snowballed from there to be honest subhanallah mashallah what, what, what kind of advice you can give to this muslim students males and females in canadian universities who are not yet interested to join the msas or they don't care or they didn't see how important mm -hmm. they are so that's a big one <laughs> uh, I would say that uh, your time in university is short and you really won't regret attending some of the, you know, on-campus MSA events. Yeah. You're likely going to meet one of your best friends for the rest of your life at the uh, MSA. You're going to meet some amazing uh, people, alhamdulillah. And uh, 
you'll be able to inshallah have opportunities where you can give back and you can grow you know people who have at least the msas i know here in hamilton there, there's two in my city the people who've been a part of those msas and those institutions have been a part of them time and time again that you see them coming in a lower position then over the years you end up seeing that they're the president or a vice president or something like that and subhanallah some of these people actually mentioned saying you know what all it was was a an accident that i showed up to one event and i made a new friend or i really liked you know what the imam had said and then this kind of uh helped them uh, you know love that msa and kind of trickle down to now them being the the president's panel so really do just give it a shot find some event that they are hosting there are so usually there's social events usually there are uh events uh, focused on like teaching like halakhas uh there can even be you know charitable events like i remember being part of events that would you know we we went down to uh, the city center and we were giving out uh food and coffee and you know sometimes winter clothing to needy families or homeless uh people subhanallah uh just here in hamilton so i'm pretty sure there's a lot of opportunities for people to get really engaged inshallah so uh you know young muslims can definitely find something that that interests them at the msa give it a shot and uh you know don't hold back you might have many assignments on the go or a busy school life but don't miss out on opportunity and uh, pr- i promise you i spent hours with my msa and alhamdulillah i still passed with great marks so <laughs> you can do it too inshallah <laughs> mashallah 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 you know while you were to i'm sorry for that there's a technical problem with the video uh, while you were uh, okay it's uh, something had to do with the internet i don't know while you were talking about the importance of this kind of beautiful gatherings of the msa as an mm-hmm. example my mind went through the philosophy or the idea or the wisdom of the jama'a prayer the collective prayer mm-hmm. how important it is for us subhanallah you are describing some of the aspects as a university student now you were a non-muslim it's not just you became a muslim alhamdulillah but you were finding a continuous support then you started enjoying being with them then you were seeking the knowledge then you became aware how to solve your problem always and you are now providing support for others because you were uh, joining a number of others mm. prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in many times he was telling the muslim don't stay alone because staying alone he made like a metaphor he said uh, the, the, the meaning the wolf if he want to attack you know a number of sheep he will he will be focusing on the one sheep which decided just to stay alone because it's an easy hunt okay so subhanallah i was thinking about the the jama'a prayer the collective prayer and many times it happens i i my personally even though i'm advising the people preaching the people talking about such and such you know sometimes you are you feel bad because you failed to do something you have a very bad news about something you love you did not succeed in doing you have a lot of pressure you are very tired you were physically you have health problem many reasons make you down once you go to the jama'a prayer just you pray if one of them just smiled in your face just <laughs> if another one just salam alaikum we missed you mashallah where have you been brother that's it that's it خلاص you know you, you forget you know many things so what if you have a very strong relation with this group of musallin i'm talking just about regular any masjid next to you so what if it's not just you pray together no you have a common intellectual big golden beautiful goals so this whatever you might feel down you know the the number of them they will push you up inshallah i think this is maybe one of the best success stories we need to highlight brother joshua i know you have exams and i promised you not to take more than 15 minutes of your time my time is finished if you want to send the final message for students in universities about anything that will help them to succeed inshallah in this dunya and the akhirah in one two minutes and 
We are ready to finish, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. Now, bless you, Dr. Amjad. I definitely will uh, take you up on that opportunity. And uh, don't be shy to ever invite me again. Now, bless you. Uh, I, I very uh, like this program, and you're an amazing host. I would say, yeah. with only the op- if I can only give one advice uh, or have one more comment, I would say, subhanAllah, that, uh, you know, again, just on that hadith you mentioned about the the wolf going after the uh, the lone uh, sheep, subhanAllah. Oh, sheep, sheep. Uh, one of my, one of the research I'm working on is uh, actually about unity, just like you, the hadith is about, and also uh, the shaitan strategy to target unity, subhanAllah. Because imagine if, a she- if the herd of sheep itself actually disintegrated from a herd and everybody became the lone the lone sheep subhanallah then everybody <laughs> would be uh at the mercy of the wolf and then there'd be no group for you to even try to run to subhanallah so subhanallah it's very really nice like said, yeah yeah that's true that's true if yeah. anyone can join an msa start an msa or you know join any other uh, institution islamic institution that is in your area really do try to you know stay attached uh, subhanallah and again um you know make dua for the for your communities and make dua for you know any of the shortcomings in your group because we are as the muslims we're not perfect but we alhamdulillah have the recipe to become uh perfect subhanallah so we do our best and uh you know, we should always be forgiving and pardoning and have realistic expectations okay. from each other, but realize that what's best for us is truly to uh, stick together, subhanAllah. MashaAllah, I liked your statement. We are not perfect, but we have the recipe how to be perfect, which is true. Allah gave us the divine recipe. Just apply it. Put the right ingredients in the right way mix them <laughs> in the right way you will have the best perfect inshallah inshallah Joshua and I hope that you know in public I want to invite you in our next month in October if you finished your exams to be one of our guests uh, for many times I mean to have your own program think about it inshallah okay <laughs> we would love to have you inshallah in this October month, inshallah, to have your own episode and giving this kind of very beautiful. And instead of me hosting you, you will be addressing the people by your own, inshallah. Oh, subhanAllah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> think about it. <laughs> okay, alhamdulillah. Thank you, so Thank you very much. much. Barakallah feek. Respected brothers and sisters, on your behalf, I thank Brother Joshua for being with us in a success story. Success story uh, should not be something like Hollywood movies. You know, he was a very something, then he became a hero, then he destroyed a full army, then he moved from March to Moon. No, 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 no. Sometimes these simple things that we do not pay attention when they are put together, they are the real success stories. Because many people, they commit suicide because they don't know these things. Many people, they lose their lives because they have no idea about MashaAllah, what Brother Joshua uh, described as the perfect recipe, i.e. Islam. Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. See you, inshallah, this coming uh, Friday, bi'ibni mawla azza wa jal, from 6 up to 8.30. Jazakallah khair. Thank you very much, Brother Joshua. May Allah give you barakah and tawfiq and success in your exams. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Amin. Wa alaikum